Are you running into a bunch of printer fails and you just don't know why? Well, today I'm going to talk about five of my top annoying print fails. See you inside. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's video. Today's video, we are talking about my top five annoying print fails. So this is a failure of a print. It's not, it can be lead, lead to multiple things that can cause this. I'm just gonna discuss some key points, but these are my top five of things you will run into as failures in a 3D print. So does that mean, oh, they're all gonna fail and do this? No, not every print fails. Prints fail, usually there's a reason for it. Whether the temperature's too hot, they're mechanical, bad model. Um, there's all kinds of things that can cause a print fail. These are just my top five ones that I've run into. There's tons of them out there. There's other solutions than what I'm gonna recommend too, but I'm just gonna give some quick high level recommendations on how to try to get past them and deal with those pesky fails. Cause let's be honest, you're gonna have failures. You're in 3D printing. There's gonna be prints that don't come out right. There's gonna be printer mechanical issues that can mess with it, but keep printing. You know, it's one of those things, keep trying. Always keep trying. If you've gotten into this, keep going. That's the only way you're gonna learn in advance. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing on this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell so you get notified anytime I release a video. And if you got a question about something, do not hesitate. Put something down in the comments. Start a conversation with me. I try to respond to them. So here's on to number five. So number five is model warping. Pretty doesn't happen all the time, doesn't happen a lot, but what it is is the model warps. This should be perfectly straight, but it warped in about that much. So what a lot of times what can happen to that can be simple things such as your build plate is too hot. It could be just bad plate adhesion. Maybe you need a raft or something along that line to keep the model flat on the table. Because a lot of times what happens is it peels up and the printer keeps pushing it down and keeps building the model. You'll get your model, but that end will be warped up when it should be flat and straight. So a couple simple things that can fix that. It's, it could be an uneven bed, level your bed. Um, always check your bed level. That's an important thing before you do any print, but keep going. This is a minor thing. Number five is one thing I rarely see. And nine times out of 10, I just need to lower my build plate temperature. A lot of times I run it at 60, some models, some materials, I've noticed I need to run it at 50. Depending on the time of year, I've noticed I need to cut it down a little bit. If it's in the middle of winter, I usually want up in 60. But if I'm in summer, I want to drop that guy down to about 50. Just to try to keep everything adhered to the plate, because that's nine times out of 10, what happens to you? So on to number four. So number four is model movement, where the model actually in the middle of the print it's shifted. So a better way to see that is this one right here. You can actually see the shift in the print. That should be a perfect straight rod and it's shifted over. So common issues with this bad model, your head could be dragging on the model. So you don't have a good retraction distance. It could be just the model lost adhesion and moved um, on its adhesion to the build plate. There's a lot of things that can cause this. It could be just a bad model. Um, I've had it where these have moved and I put it in mesh mixer and ran the repair tool on it and it prints fine afterward. So this is something you will see quite a bit, especially if your head is dragging across the model and it pushes it or it just gets stuck and shifts everything over. Um, it could be a loose belt that's causing this issue. It's annoying. It's sometimes difficult to catch like this piece here. It printed all pretty much almost completely before I caught that it had shifted over a little bit. This goes to an R2-D2 that you guys will see on the channel later on. Um, and this guy does too. And you can see it, it's a pretty significant shift that made this model fail. So I had to go back and redo it, check my printer. This, even a bed level can affect something like this. So again, I've said that bed level twice. You're probably gonna hear me say bed level a lot. Um, because if you don't get that good adhesion on that first plate and something goes wrong like this, you've wasted your PLA, you've wasted time, and you've wasted money. So some pretty simple fixes, you know, check those belts, 
make sure you're getting good plate adhesion, make sure you're sitting on there and check that retraction distance. It's one thing that you can easily check to make sure you're not dragging across the model. And if you do see this and you've got two or three things on the table that it's going across, move it down to just one of the items. Print one item at a time. I know it's really great to print multiple items at one time, but slow it down. You're not in a rush here. You're here to get a good clean model and not waste material, time, and money. So slow down, print one item at a time so it's not having to make those hops either that can actually create that drag and create that shift. So on to number three. So number three is the blob. Now I've got a remnants of a blob here in my hand. And what happened is it either didn't adhere to the plate and everything started adhering to my nozzle and this thing enveloped my nozzle up into my heat sink and started going up in the enclosure where everything is. It actually even blocked my fans, which was really a dangerous thing, but luckily I didn't have it, but that could start a fire from this stuff, getting up in there and stuck. But this thing encompassed my entire heat sink and um, hot end element. And let me tell you, it's not fun to clean it off. Once it hardens, you gotta get a blowtorch or a heat gun or something to help melt this stuff to get it pried away. And a lot of times you can easily damage your hot end by, and you're definitely probably gonna damage your nozzle by trying to get this thing off. A lot of times when I see this, the number one fix is replace the hot end. Um, Cause well, one, it's gonna take time to get this off. The hot ends for an Ender 3, they're about $20. They're not terrible to buy, not overly expensive, but this guy is one of the worst things to have to deal with because this thing can get in there clog up your fans and melt into everything and really cause a big mess um, and a difficult mess at the same time and a lot of this is bad plate adhesion um, it lost adhesion but it clung to the nozzle itself so as the printer kept extruding it clung and filled in the nozzle area instead of sticking anything to the plate so it just didn't work all that well and uh it just left me a big enough mess that Honestly, this time to clean up the other hot end, I replaced my hot end, took that whole assembly off, and had a, I had a spare um, to get it back in operation. So this is one of the last things you guys want to have to deal with. So make sure your first layer is going down good. You know, make sure that bed's level, make sure it's laying down good, make sure you're getting good output, and hopefully you can avoid this. Will you always avoid it? Probably not. Um, you'll probably have it once or twice. Um, it, it looks pretty cool when you first see it sometimes, but then comes the work of trying to get your printer back to normal. And you can throw a lot of things out of alignment and different things by twerking on it, prying on it and everything like that. So, you know, make sure you're checking that bed level and everything. Get that good adhesion. Um, make sure everything looks good before you walk away from the printer and just trust it's going to work because this may be your end result. On to number two. So number two is the spaghetti string. So you can, depending on how long you walk away from your print, you may just have a table of just string covering everything. It happens. So it can be anything from bad plate adhesion. Your model got knocked off the plate and your extruder and everything's still going, putting out that PLA in a string, making the spaghetti. It happens. This is one of the more common things I see happen to one of my prints is something, a support gets broken and it makes a spaghetti string somewhere on the table and it just makes a mess. And it's not that hard to clean up, it's just waste of material and time. So, you know, make sure you're getting that good plate adhesion, you know, try to keep minimal number of objects on the plate as possible, will help keep things from getting knocked off, check your retraction distance, all that kind of stuff can easily help you prevent this kind of problem. So, with that said, on to number one. So number one is kind of a two for one. Um, as you can see here, it just looks like fuzz. But what happened here is for me, it was a clog nozzle that caused under extrusion. Basically my shooter was not pushing out the material that should have, but it was pushing out enough to actually start the print. Uh, it made, it can be one of the most frustrating ones you can run into because you may think your nozzle's clear, you try to print and you're right back where you started and it's just plain annoying. Now, Creality printers, Ender 3s and CR10s, the hot end, if that Bowden tube is not flushed down in there all the way, it's very easy for it to make a plug and plug up your printer and you may stick that needle up there and get stuff coming back out, but it's not pushing the way it has to. You gotta take that nozzle off and clean all of that out. It's 
an annoying process, and it can be avoided by several ways. So one thing, when you're changing your PLA and you're pulling the old stuff back out, that can pull on that Bowden tube and pull it up. So when you put that new roll in, unfortunately, you just created the plug. So make sure when you're pushing in new PLA and getting everything down that that Bowden tube is definitely down in there and seated as far as it'll go to try to avoid that problem. Um, another issue too is if everything seems fine, look up at the extruder itself. The gear may have stripped away enough PLA, it can't get a grip on it and push it through. So you may have to pull back, cut that bad section out, and then hopefully it'll get back to normal. All else fails, I've had to replace a hot end just to get it to working again. Um, and for some reason, that one hot end, I never got it to work again after cleaning it with a blowtorch, acetone, making sure it was all clean. Every time I've tried it, it just plugs up. It's not the most ideal thing, but it's what you gotta do to get your printer back in business. Cause sometimes I'm trying to print big projects pretty quickly. So having a printer down is just not an option for me. But those are some simple ways to get around that and make sure that that's working. So a lot of neat things. Those are my top five guys. They are annoying. They are a pain to work around, but you're gonna run into them. So that's why I'm trying to tell you this now, that you're gonna run into issues with prints. It's nothing you did wrong. It may be nothing you did wrong that you get a bad print. It happens. That's part of 3D printing. Part of that creative process is every once in a while you're gonna have a dud or you're gonna have a print that just drives you insane. Believe me, I run into them all the time that why won't this work? So it's kind of one of those things. If you guys have a fail that I didn't talk about here, leave me a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Let's get a discussion going. If you guys enjoyed what you saw today, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate when you do and follow the channel because that makes me know you guys are enjoying what I'm putting out, the material I'm putting out. If there's something you want to see on the channel, please leave a comment down below. I read all the comments. I want to know what you want to see in regard to 3D printing and I want to help try to make that content. So I appreciate you guys watching all this way the video and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, okay, I couldn't leave it at just five. I gotta give you number six, or number six, number zero, number 0.5. But <laughs> one of the most annoying things for me and that is completely out of my control nine times out of 10 is a power failure. Your power goes out in your house and all that. And I use Octoprint, so I have a CR10 V2, or N3 V2 that has the print resume on power, but it doesn't help me with the Octoprint, unfortunately. So, that means I had to do something to make sure that interruption didn't hurt me that much. So that's where I went to this guy, a large scale cyber power, 1500 VA ABR uh, battery backup unit. Normally you'd see these on computers, stuff like that, but this guy has saved my butt with my Raspberry Pis. So I have five of them down in operation down there. All five of them are plugged into that. The printers, when they come back, they go to resume. The Raspberry Pi is ready up and waiting for them. Never suffered a power failure. So that's one way it prevents me from losing prints. If you're using an older Ender 3 V1 or a CR10 V1, they're worth the investment. That one right there that I showed you costs about $165 on Amazon. My affiliate link is down below, along with my other affiliate links to other parts. So um, if you guys do, please use my link. It does help me out. Um, helps me earn a little bit of money towards from the channel. So I appreciate you guys. That's my number, that's my bonus word of advice for you. So get a battery backup, especially if you're using an Octoprint or an older printer, get a good battery backup to power the thing to keep it going for that few minutes in a power outage so you don't lose the entire print. Um, I've lost, I honestly just lost a print the other day because of a power failure on a printer that wasn't on a battery backup. So, but it does happen. So take care, guys. I appreciate your time. We'll see you next time.